Uh, well, Warren, over the 25 or so years uh, altogether that I was working on uh, Gettysburg first and then Gods and Generals, I came to understand in a way that perhaps I was not conscious of when I started that those films taken together are a cinematic meditation on why good, honorable, ethical men choose to go to war. So uh, you can't watch those films without coming away with a real sense of why the men in blue were fighting and why the men in gray were fighting. <coughs> and you'll n also notice in those movies that it's not about uh, the exploiters, the warmongers, the sadists, uh, the profiteers. There are always those people who uh, profit from war at the expense of others in all conflicts. And movies should be made about such people. It, it just was not my interest. My interest was exploring where would members of my family have been, where would my friends have been, uh, people who are trying to live their lives ethically, trying to do the right thing, groping for the right answer. And so I was interested in following those men in the Civil War. Uh, what made uh, a school teacher like Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain enlist and fight for the North? What made a different school teacher, uh, Thomas Jonathan, St later called Stonewall Jackson, uh, enlist and fight for the Southern Confederacy. I wanted to know their reasons, their best reasons, because without understanding uh, why people are fighting, you can't understand the Civil War. Uh, and if you try to reduce the Civil War to the good guys and the bad guys, you're totally going to miss it. It's just a caricature of what it is. It may make some people feel better about themselves 150 years later, but it's, it, it doesn't serve any purpose that I can think of. And it's certainly not my job as a filmmaker to reinforce uh, conventional wisdom or some notion of what the people think should be said about the Civil War. Uh, uh, the, the, the job of a filmmaker is to try to illuminate, try to get to the truth wherever that truth uh, leads you. So again, my interest was exploring such men. Um, and, and along the way, I found that um, uh, though they are human and though they are flawed like all of us, uh, people like Joshua Chamberlain and uh, Robert E. Lee were honorable people uh, trying to do their duty as they saw it. So while I was making those movies for that 25-year period, Warren, uh, another question started to uh, surface, I think first in my subconscious and then I came to realize that I, I guess I'm instinctual as a filmmaker. I feel things first and later on I try to understand them uh, intellectually. Um, and that question is uh, where were the good, honorable, ethical, courageous men who were opposed to the war? There were such people, men and women. There were such people in the South and there were such people in the North. Uh, and so that question became alive for me, and I was therefore uh, preconditioned to respond to the novel The Copperhead when I came across it. Now I'm reading Civil War fiction all the time, first of all because I love to read it and I'm curious, and it's an end in and of itself. I read all sorts of literature. Uh, but also because in the back of my mind I'm thinking, oh, maybe there's another Civil War story I should tell as a filmmaker. So when I came across The Copperhead, written by Harold Frederick, I, 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 it did hit a chord with me. And as any filmmaker knows, if you don't strike that chord with the material, if you don't connect emotionally and viscerally and intellectually, uh, you better not even think about making it into a movie because you'll never be able to sustain the effort and the commitment it takes to make a movie because it could take a year, it could take 10 years, it could take the rest of your life. So you better have a real connection there. Um, and I did with The Copperhead. Uh, it's not a perfect novel, what novel is. Uh, it's, a, it's a product of its time. It was published in 1893, but I found it to have a great authenticity. It was written, uh, as I say, in 93, uh, but Harold Frederick was a boy during the Civil War, and he lives in upstate New York. And, and so what he writes about, even though The Copperhead is a work of fiction, what he writes about, which is the anti-war movement in the North, he writes about the effect of the war on the home front. These were compelling questions to me that I wanted to visit. 
and as we know, it's a little-known subject. Uh, it's not much discussed even among scholarly circles. There are a number of uh, 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 outstanding books that were written principally by uh, an author, by the historian by the name of Clement, who wrote mainly in the 1960s. Uh, uh, I think one is called uh, The Price of Dissent. He talks about the congressman of Landingham. Uh, who was an anti-war Democrat. He talk, there's another book he wrote called uh, Copperheads of the Miss Midwest. Uh, but generally speaking, it's, it's not known. It's certainly, and in the popular culture in the world of cinema, I think this is the first movie about the anti-war movement in the North. So uh, you can understand that these things, uh, they don't happen overnight, uh, certainly not with this filmmaker. It kind of lives with me. It knocks around for a while. Then I, fi I found this book, and then I decided, yeah, this is a movie I want to make.